I think a lot of questions that probably everyone here wants to know is, you're obviously towards the end of your career. How many more Konos do you have in you? Cool. Uh, to keep everyone understand. I did my best to match your 10, but I failed miserable. How was my week? Now it's been good. I think uh, I have a few weeks head start uh, of a head start. Spending four weeks there has been been really good. As you all know, um, people come to Kona earlier and earlier, and it's really cool to be in Hawaii but not be in the madness of, of Kona. Um, as much as I love it, it's it's enough to soak up in a whole week. You know, it's kind of like uh, reminds me a little bit of of an Olympic village for age groupers. Everybody looks ripped, everybody's fit, everybody's checking each other out. What has he got in the cart in the supermarket? It's like, <laughs> um, so uh, it's really good to live a normal life. I had my family over there with, um, yeah, with the two kids and Emma who've just flown over to Australia. So um, it's good coming here and being, you know, appreciative of the vibe and enjoying a pier swim rather than being like, oh God, I have to be there at the crack of dawn to miss everybody. How important is it to, to have the family with you and not just have triathlon from morning until evening? Yeah, I, I, I didn't think this was possible a few years ago, but uh, family is definitely something that's become uh, super important and uh, also grounding. You know, you come home from a session and whether it's gone good or bad, um, Luca wants to play and wants to do this and show me his latest jumps. and um, it's, it's kind of the coolest thing in the world and makes me realize that triathlon is awesome and I love it, um, but it is the greatest hobby in the world. And um, that, that's why I enjoy having that normality in life and then coming here for, uh, for business on Saturday. Business on Saturday. You didn't have the luckiest of years the past two years. Are you burning more for Kona than ever before? Yeah, that's, I mean, that shows you what triathlon is. You know, we, we judge a year on, on, on this race coming up. And um, they, were, they weren't bad years, actually, if I look at them. They weren't entirely terrible. Yeah. But um, just here, uh, um, of course, um, uh, my slowest ever marathon, or so I hope, uh, two years ago. And um, last year, not being on the start line is definitely also the reason why I'm on the start line this year and why I'm here um, once again having an awesome evening with all of you to get all of you guys um, just because yeah standing on the sideline sucks <laughs> so it's not my thing I'm not, I'm not ready for it I would imagine <laughs> fair enough what's your best memory of Kona so far or the times you've been here um, well we just had a funny one with the I mean, the doping control was just at my house, and um, it's the same guy every year. And this guy um, rocked up my, at my house um, after the first victory, um, after the after party in 2015. And um, I had such a bad hangover, and I just walked up to the door <laughs> naked, um, not realizing what was going on. And him and two other people opened the door, uh, were standing outside, and kind of. Um, wanting to draw blood and I was like, oh, this is awkward. So there have been a lot of memories on and off the race course that have been um, really, really cool. But um, yeah, if uh, I could wish for another scenario for Saturday, it would probably be something uh, along the lines of uh, um, racing shoulder to shoulder with Sebi. Um, yeah, that was probably my favorite racing memory. Yeah. Speaking of racing shoulder to shoulder with Sebi, who are you going to race shoulder to shoulder with this Saturday? Um, I have a, a fair few guys on, on my list. Um, I think we spoke about it this morning at uh, breakfast with Bob already. Um, I'm surprised how many people think that Alistair Brownlee can't deal with the heat when he won the Rio <laughs> Olympic Games. I mean, it's not like it was chilly there. Um, and also, if you know him, he's, he's not a guy for second place. He's not a guy who uh, comes and prepares to check something out. <laughs> I call BS, I smell BS from a long way out. Um, definitely Sebi's in good form and, and it is October so we know Patrick Lange is in form. Um, and um, you know, um, if I have an outside shot I think Lionel's going to have the best race of his life so far. Um, reminds me a bit of, um, of Ferris in 2005 actually, you know, coming from injury probably made him a better athlete in terms of being more prepared and being more aware of what's going on. So um, my list is a little longer this year. We don't want to talk too much about race tactics and everything, but did Josh's announcement that he wants to break the swim course record have any influence on your race tactics? 
Let him have it. Let him have it. <laughs> if I can be on his feet, that would be great. Um, but it's one of those things um, you have to see how it goes on race day. You know, it's uh, uh, it's a long day thereafter, and well, there's some very very strong cyclists coming through. And I think that's um, something I've I've got my sights set on the on the finish line, and uh, and that's the that's where I want to get first. I don't really care about times. I don't care about the records in between. Um, the big one will do. Hey, being relaxed for the day and making it to the start line, that's one thing. But um, other than that, you've got a lot of partners of yours represented here, which you need also important for race day and training and everything, the equipment. So let's talk a little bit about the things you brought us here. Um, let's start with the bike. Bikes always raise their emotions and get the attraction. That's why the Brogansi is sitting in front of him, <laughs> expressing. <laughs> well, you mentioned the handlebars, now let's talk about them. They're, they're that obvious. Something new. Um, yeah, indeed. I mean, um, kind of the walking incident in, uh, when was it, 16, 17? <laughs> um, kind of made me realize that I was focused on the wrong things uh, in my sport and in my life and that I really needed to concentrate on the performance rather than looking for little gains here and there and we felt that after two years time it was you know an opportunity to go back to the wind tunnel find something new and of course um, these kind of handlebars have been making a big splash Patrick launched them last year and sort of launched the fashion um, and a lot of people have been following um, and we didn't just want to follow we wanted to create something new so we got the tech guys from Zip and uh, our engineers from Canyon together and we started looking at what we can do and how we can make it better and basically what we did is create a very comfortable bar that's closed at the bottom for aerodynamics and that fills the gap between my arms that's what that um, funny looking uh, rubber thing is in the middle um, which adds a little bit of storage but the real gain there is, is, is the aerodynamics uh, turned out to be surprisingly uh, surprisingly useful actually since I'm probably one of five guys in the field, uh, not race, racing in this praying mantis position. Um, the actual benefit of rounding the arm pads didn't, didn't have that much impact. Um, the big thing really was closing the gap in between. Um, and as always, aerodynamics are so individual that, uh, yeah, that was the solution that we ended up figuring out. Hey, another thing is uh, new colors, color change. We got the suit standing next to your bike. Is that your suit? Yeah, we, um, so it's an old German wives tale that if you go for a hike and it's a hot day and you're taking a slab of chocolate, you wrap it in a wet, dark towel. And the idea is that the evaporation um, cools you down or cools down the chocolate more than a white towel ever would. So we figured, let's try it, flip the colors. And um, it turned out surprisingly well in terms of evaporation and feeling cooler despite being a dark suit and um, then um, yeah that's that's basically what we did I mean it's a, it's a new material it's actually a glued suit um, so it's um, yeah just uh, a little bit test a little bit better the material in terms of aerodynamics once we go into the wind tunnel we test everything through um, and that's why I'm quite excited about it because yeah it's cooler and faster apparently We'll see for sure on Saturday. We'll check it we out. Will. <laughs> what you look like. Look at the forehead and the sweat. But it's there's more. Cool there's more. Stuff. There's shoes. I'm not sure anybody spotted them yet behind glass. Please leave them behind glass while the bike is later on available up here where we're sitting for pictures and looking at it and everything. What's hidden behind the glass stays behind the glass, please. Um, how much can you say about the shoes <clears throat> other than they're here? I'm, I'm not even sure. So they're um, they're. Uh, prototype and um, they're that much of a prototype that the Essex stripes were painted on last week um, <laughs> because they are meant to be launched in Tokyo um, next year um, they are basically the answer to the famous 4% um, of the competition um, we made it 4.5 um, <laughs> <laughs> no it's um, it's something that uh, Essex has actually been playing on social media a little bit um, a little bit imagine a rocking chair um, so the sole of the shoe, if you can see that one, is, is, is quite rounded, um, which actually gives a really smooth 
impact and lets you roll forward really well to carry your energy. Um, it doesn't have a spring in it. Um, it does have a little a little um, carbon plate, but it's not that that concept wasn't copied. It really is the the shape of the sole um, that they've designed in uh, yeah in terms of in terms of being the long run yeah. kind of uh, shoe and it's something that uh, I was actually forced to do. I, I had to change my running shoes after Frankfurt. Um, I've been working with uh, with a gym coach uh, over the winter because of my injury, because of my hip. I had to do some strength coaching and um, this guy turned out to be a genius and after 37 years managed to turn on my glutes <laughs> and for the first time ever um, I don't have calf problems running anymore and I seem to have a straighter impact on my foot, yep. which unfortunately left me with really, really, really bad blistering in my race flats that were tried and trusted for over two years. And so I was forced to change to a narrow shoe and um, lucky enough, um, someone in Japan decided that I could have the shoe and um, been running with it, with it exclusively in Maui, really. I only started testing it in Maui and um, I'm really happy with it and looking forward to putting them on on Saturday. It's a shoe designed to make you faster. I gotta ask you: You're willing to let Josh have the swim course record? Are you willing to let Patrick have the run course record? Yeah, take it. Honestly, <laughs> I don't give a shit. Have all the records. I just want the, the, the funny, the, the ugliest trophy in sports. You know, the one that they make. It's, I grew up in South Africa, and there's all guys, all kinds of people that sell street art. And what they do is they take cans and they shape them in funny ways into anything you want, really, a bus or a mannequin. And that's kind of what the Iron Man statue looks like. Everybody gets this awesome bowl for, you know, two second to tenth place. But then this Iron Man, and anybody who walks into my house is like, yeah, but man, where's the trophy? And I'm like, no, that's it, man, look at it. <laughs> and um, that, that's all. Uh, the records, uh, anybody, yeah, the, the records are up for grabs. I, I really would be entirely satisfied with just another one of these beautifully ugly trophies. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Hey, the sun's slowly setting, but one more thing I want to talk about is uh, Oglia, obviously, because it's uh, a part where you're, on the one hand, heavily involved in development as well, um, work with the helmet and everything. But another thing I want to point out is that we talked about all the, like, the equipment and improving on it and everything, but emotions is a big part of racing as well. Something that reflects in your Oakley collection this year with the uh, OCP. What's behind that? Well, um, it's um, it's something we've kind of uh, seen, seen a few times around, but um, really wanted to take it to a, a more personal edge. I mean, we were, yeah, like you said, heavily in involved in the aerodynamics of the helmet and and playing around with that and, and ventilation, all that kind of thing. But this year we really felt like we needed that emotional connection and um, having a little, um, a little uh, mantra etched into the lenses is, uh, turned out to be a surprisingly powerful little mantra that um, you know, is always just at the bottom of my sight. And it says, because I can. Um, there's a, a famous movie quote by, I believe, Gerard Butler, and uh, it goes, something along the lines of why why are you still going on and um, I uh, found myself looking at because I can <laughs> very often this year <laughs> even though I was in quite a lot of doubt at that very moment whether I could but uh, it's something that's um, you know um, I think Oakley's known to be emotional and to be that brand that takes you along or that you take along on your on your adventures and um, geez we've been uh, going on adventures together for 14 years now, so um, that's how long I've been with these guys, so a big thank you, and um, looking forward to hopefully not another 14, but <laughs> a few more. <laughs> War einfach bereit, es auszuprobieren und hatte einfach auch verdammt nochmal Glück, dass es geklappt hat. Ich äh, bin den längsten Lauf mit 35 Kilometern im Schuh gelaufen, also ich habe auch volles Vertrauen, dass das klappt. I promise you a little goodie if you ask a question. <laughs> there you go. Sucks. Every question was sucks. Uh, just for the English guys. The question was about the shoe. Um, just changing it last minute. Um, whether it's a good idea to change it, and um, I basically replied that uh, I didn't have a choice. I don't. I didn't feel confident in my old, old race flats, and and um, I'm. I just got lucky. I just got lucky that the shoe really fit like a glove, and um, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with it. 
Um, to be honest, I, I, I looked up what the 4% shoe was all about um, after I got these. Um, I, I'm not a big fan in hypes, and, and if somebody tells you you're going to run 4% faster because of a shoe, I believe it's a crock of shit, honestly. Um, but it seems that the science is fairly good on it, and that there's a lot of people um, um, doing very well in this shoe. I always believe that in triathlon, it's a strength-based run, so it's entirely different to what the guys are doing when they run 255 kilometers for 42 of them in a row. Um, but um, yeah, in terms of in terms of all that, I was a little bit surprised actually about the whole whole hype that I just completely ignored up until then. There you go. <laughs> come on. Tell me. Who has a question or one socks? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of questions that probably everyone here wants to know is you're obviously towards the end of your career. How many more Konos do you have in you? Cool. Uh, X plus one. So um, <laughs> it's not the last one, that's for sure. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm hungry. I've really enjoyed my preparation. I feel like uh, it's gone well up and until now. Um, should I be proven wrong on Saturday <laughs> and it turns out to be a, a tough day, then, um, then I'll have even more incentive to keep going. So either way, um, you'll see me here next year. So, are you ready to catch? <laughs> uh, Jan, Yo. you, you've kind of been out of the action here for, for two years. Once you know you raced, it didn't go well, and last year the, the, uh, the other injury. Don't worry, I'm not hurt. You're good. <laughs> I know you are. Um, what, have you, what have you learned sitting on the sidelines, kind of watching what has gone on in the last two years? Well, you know, the first year, obviously, um, I learned more about myself than I learned about the race because uh, going out and then and then walking along was just a, a bit of a mental process and, and the whole thing that was going on around. And then um, last year, you know, let's be honest, uh, how long have you been watching this race for and, 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 and what really changes? We were talking about <coughs> times getting faster. Um, Aerodynamics are getting better. You know, swims are not really improving that much. Runs are, yeah, they're moving there about. I think the depth of racing is, is becoming exciting. Um, in terms of um, strengths of athletes shifting, you know, the race doesn't blow up in Hawaii like it did a few years ago. But I think it's so field dependent, and um, there are a lot of strong guys this year that that's the beauty of coming here. Um, we can predict all kinds of things, but. In, at the end, we all have to wait till Saturday and, and see how it turns out, and that, that's that's the beauty of sport for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, you have a a gold medal, two titles here, multiple 70.3 world records and or world titles, and two kids. What are, what are you chasing? <laughs> What are you chasing? Why, why are you here? Man, you're only as good as the next race. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, just simply coming to a point where I'm actually enjoying the process where it's not as stressful. Um, I feel like I don't have, uh, I don't have to prove it, but I want to prove it. And um, I really enjoy being able to do it with the family. So that's uh, living the dream. Uh, having Alistair in the race and kind of how the swim shook out, do you expect a group of you guys to get off the front, like you, Josh, Ali, T.O., and a couple other fast swimmers? Uh, well, there's fast swimmers, and then there is breaking the record fast swimmers, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm uh, quite in the quite willing to go that deep in the swim uh, you know there's there's a lot of strong cycling power here there's a lot of running power here and, and the race is the side of the finish line so uh, I think um, we'll have to see what the arms say on the day but uh, if the prognosis rings true um, a swim course record I think is a is a stretch for me here with your current run form do you think you'd be willing to confident enough to come off the bike with Patrick and run shoulder to shoulder yeah, I'd want him to be no more than two minutes ahead of me. And two minutes ahead of me. And two minutes ahead of me. And two minutes ahead of me. Damn! Um, off the bike. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling good about my run. And I think uh, even though it is October and we're seeing a different Patrick Lange every year in October, uh, I think, um, yeah, it's a good year to stick it. And how much up the road do you not want Cam to get up? <laughs> so, so he, so he can't beat you. Well, the, the good thing is if Cam gets too far up the road, he's just going to get his phone out and he's going to start bashing people on, on, on Instagram. So, 
it's uh, it's a fine line for him between um, you know being too far and and no and uh, and riding the race. I don't know. I'm I'm really looking forward to to seeing what he can do. He is someone who really is consistently pushing the top mark on the bike. And um, who knows? You know, maybe I can duck small and get really tight and behind him if he really does with a ride with a road bike. Um, I heard that's what he's going to do. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Without your support, none of these videos would be possible, none of this content. Uh, so thank you guys so much for sponsoring the series. The best way you can continue to help out is if you just go to talbacox.com, uh, either donate uh, or shop. Uh, got some merchandise for sale. So there's some pictures on there, hats, t-shirts, everything. So thank you so much again and can't wait to uh, start pumping out more content for you. Mahalo.